Hey, Peter, Greg, Miami, Florida. I'm in the kitchen. Let's do something cool today. Okay, today what we're going to do is we're going to make Jingle Bell Loaf. And this is taken from a video I saw called Georgie Loaf, which you can look up. And that gentleman makes a loaf, a uh, meatloaf for his dogs. So I'm taking off on his, made a few changes, and I'm going to show you what I do for jingles. So I'm calling this Jingle Bell Loaf for my dog Jingle Bells. His name is, do his, his name is really Jingles. So what am I doing? Am I cooking the dog? Am I cooking my dog? Of course not. I'm not cooking the dog. What I'm doing is I'm making homemade food for him and I'll make a whole video on how, why, when, and where on that one. But for right now, let's see what it is I'm going to do, okay? I've got a second camera running here. I got gloves, I got a food processor, I got potassium, but I'm not gonna put it in right now. So I'm going to use ground turkey, and I got this at Publix, which is like a major grocery store in the Miami area. So we got ground turkey, I got mild shredded cheddar cheese. This is absolutely delicious. I have to tell you, this meatloaf, my brother had three slices. I had some slices and I still munch on it, even though it's for jingles. It's 100% whole human foods that you get at the grocery store. I got a bag of green string beans. Okay, this is a frozen one. I'm going to use four fresh eggs and these eggs are Davidson's um, pasture eggs but they're also pasteurized and that means that all the salmonella and everything is mostly killed and it's also human uh, raised meaning it's it's in a humane situation they're not they don't stuff the chickens and the hens and all in a little corner we got two green peppers we have what does that look like? Carrots. I've got two fresh sweet potatoes. And I'm swinging back and forth here. I got two whole red apples, the red delicious apples. I have two pears. Oh my God, they smell delicious. I got a package of zucchini of which I'm going to use two or three. I got a package of celery which I'm going to use Probably two stalks because I personally don't like celery. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna have some. Of, I'm gonna sneak some of this meatloaf. So I'm going to uh, put what I like in here. And then I've got organic ground beef, which is more meat, and I've got free range uh, organic ground lamb. And we're gonna make this. So let me tell you what I'm gonna do because I, I can't have the camera running through this whole thing because the processor is gonna make a lot of noise, a lot, a lot of noise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. I'm going to core the apples and core the, the uh, peaches, meaning no pits. I'm gonna scrub the sweet potatoes and I'm gonna chop them up so they're not too much to handle. Uh, I'm going to cut the tips off of the squash and I'm going to use two or three. The, the zucchini tastes good. I'm going to scrub uh, two sticks of celery and I'm going to cut that up. I'm going to take the stuff out of the bag here, out of the bag here, and I'm going to put all of this except for the eggs and not the cheese and not the meats. So all the fruits and the vegetables in the pressure cooker for 10 to 15 minutes. So why am I doing that? Why would you do that, Peter, if you're going to cook it in the oven and make a meatloaf? Because I'm going to process it and from what I've read, and I'm not a veterinarian, uh, but what I've read is that the dog's intestinal tract is very short. So all of this stuff, the fresh stuff, the, the vegetables and, and a couple of the fruits are just gonna run in and out before he even has a chance to get any of the goodness out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to partially cook it about 10 to 15 minutes in the pressure cooker. I'm sorry, the electric pressure cooker. Did I spit on myself? Who's in charge around here? So anyway, uh, that is what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to process it and make it into like, it's. I'll show it to you, but it's gonna be like a soupy mush. Um, and then uh, while that is getting done in the electric pressure cooker, I'm going to 
uh, put all the meats together. I'm going to use a pair of white gloves. Okay, see, so I have nice, nice white gloves. And then I'm going to make a mixture of about 60% meats and 40%. I was going to say what's left after that, but 40% of the vegetables and uh, the the uh, the fruits. And then I'm going to add four eggs to the mixture, and I'm going to add um, a half a bag to maybe three quarters of a bag of ground mild cheddar cheese. And I have uh, spirulina, which I'm going to put, but I'm not going to put it in the loaf. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you what I do with that at the end. So let's cut right here. Let me get scrubbing and cleaning, and then I'll turn on the recordings again so you can see what the next step is. All right? It's a deal? It's a deal. I'll be right back. Okay, I put the stuff through the food processor. I got the processor in the sink where it belongs. I got two bowls of mixed the meat that we did together. You didn't need to watch me food pro put it through the food processor, did you? Did you really need to watch me do that? So I put a half a can or container of seal cut oats and um, a package of mild cheddar also in the food processor. See, I'm trying to get it uh, as processed or pre-digested as possible so that the dog, which his name is Jingles, which I don't even know where he is, is actually going to uh, be able to absorb as much of the, the goodness that's in these vegetables and grains rather than just flow in, go in one end and come out the other. And you know what that is, right? You see it every morning when you take your dog out or whatever if he's not regular. Uh, this is going to make him regular, trust me. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this around because I've got a couple of different batches going here. So this is all those vegetables and the cheese and uh, four eggs and all that is in here and here. So what I've got with the meat is I made like a hole in the center here. And I did another one with this pan and there's a hole in the center. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to divide this up evenly and pour half into this one. And then half into this one. And now I have the two halves. I have a joke. You're in a box, okay, and there's no way out of this box. There's no windows, there's no doors, there's just no way to get out of this box. And inside the box is a, a baseball bat and a ball. Okay, so how do you get out of the box? That's the riddle or the joke. Okay, so now while you're thinking, I'm mixing this meat and then I'm going to mix this meat and I'm mixing in the pureed vegetables. So no, there's no doors. There's no, there's no ceiling uh, holes. There's no way out. It's sealed. It's a, it's a titanium box. It's completely sealed. As a matter of fact, if you don't hurry up and get out of that box, you're going to run out of air. But you do have a baseball bat and a ball. So now how do you get out? Now remember, this is a joke riddle, okay? So don't go to the computer and look it up. Think it through. And that's when I made the holes in here and put the vegetables in. That's what made me think of that joke. Just so you're wondering, Peter, where did you get that from? <laughs> so you give up? You give up? You ready? This is a very big chunk. I'm going to take this big chunk out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to the next step and I'm going to bypass the mixing spoon. I'm sorry, guys. This is serious cooking here. Serious cooking. When my mother did serious cooking, it was with her hands. When she made the Greek bread for Easter and the same bread for New Year's, her hands were in there kneading that dough. So. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just kneading this Jingle Bell loaf. Jingle Bell loaf. All right, so the answer to the riddle joke is take the baseball, take the bat. Got it? Throw the ball up in the air, swing, and miss. That's strike one. So do that three times, and it's strike one, strike two, strike three, 
and you're out. <laughs> I got you on that one. And you're going like, oh my God, Peter, what a cornball joke. Yeah, what do you want me to do? I'm sitting here stirring meat with processed, I mean, uh, uh, processor food, processor vegetables, and you want me to give you a stand-up comedy routine? Dear Lord God, what do you people expect from me? Okay, so I did that bowl. Let's go this one. Okay, same joke. Okay, you're in the same room. No way out, dude. There's no way out. You're stuck. You're going to be in there for life. Now, this time, you don't have a baseball and a bat. This time, you have a table, a regular wooden table, and a saw. Saw, okay. Now, how are you going to get out? Okay, now, knowing the answer of the last one should help you on this one. Right? Right? <laughs> So I'm mixing this in. I can feel the warm and the cold. The meat is cold. The food just came out of the uh, pressure cooker, uh, the vegetables. Now I did not put the pears and the apples in the pressure cooker. I went through the processor, the food processor. So they're in here. So the aroma is just going to fill the air with this. It's just gonna be amazing. Now, I'm tempted to put the spirulina in here and the nutriments in here, but I ain't going to do it, okay? Because I don't want to cook them in high heat for an hour at 350 degrees. Because that's what I'm going to cook this for an hour or 90 minutes at 350 degrees. So to make sure it's all mixed in now, I'm going to dump all of it in one bowl. And after I do that, I'm sorry for putting the back of the bowl towards you. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to have a lot of stuff to wash, aren't I? Okay, so now I'm going to mix this. Thank God I got an apron on. Jeez. To make sure we're all mixed. I cannot tell you how amazingly good this smells. For raw meat, which is gross, okay, this smells absolutely amazing. So I put the oats, a half of, of that container, in here. And the reason that I put the oats in here is to give him a little of the whatever the oats is because I'm, I'm trying to stay away from grains from him but the steel cut oats apparently is a part of the of the diet so here's another piece of apple I'm going to just cut it up a little bit apparently the food processor missed that okay so now I'm satisfied that we're pretty well mixed every handful that I'm getting is just a joy to play with <laughs> Okay, I'm certifiable now, right? All right, so now I'm going to move this stuff down. And instead of the meatloaf pans, you know the meatloaf pans that are tall? Now I've done that every time with the meatloaf pans. Uh, and I put like six pans of meatloaf in the oven, which is running at 350 degrees. Instead, I'm taking this, I call it a, a lasagna plate, okay? But it's not, I mean, my mother makes the, the Greek, she used to make it, all this is her cooking ware, by the way. Um, she used to make the uh, the Greek uh, pasticho, the moussaka, the uh, the desserts, the Greek desserts, the baklava, all in this exact pan. And now the dog is getting <laughs> his jingle bell loaf in the same pan. Yeah, I've made lasagna in here. I made it. I should. I would. I should make a video and show you how I make my lasagna. It's quite different. You would expect that from me, right? It's quite different than everybody else's lasagna. So I'm kind of doing a poka 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 poka, which you you would normally do tapa tapa tapa, you know, get the air out of it. And I'm not making it level on the top. I kind of want, you know, you could make it like this, you know, and make it like all pretty, and then you can run the spatula over it, you know and make it like, oh my God, what an amazing meatloaf you've got there, Peter. And I'd say, well, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I do have an amazing meatloaf. So see how I made the meatloaf? It's all like level and beautiful. I don't like that. I like it with the holes, okay? And what that does is it allows it to get in there and cook a cook a cook a okay? Well, I poke a poke a poke -a. And it actually makes it look better. Should I do that three times too? Better, better, better. <laughs> so anyway, now this is going in the oven. There we go. You got the Jingle Bell loaf. 
And after it's cooked, I'm going to cut it into squares. Then I'm going to take the squares and I'm going to uh, actually vacuum pack some of them. And some of them I'm going to slice up and I'll show you the secret to the next level where I turn this into a dry kibble. All right, guys, we'll be back when this is ready to come out of the oven. All right, be right back. I will. I'm coming right back. Just, just chill. Get a cup of hot cocoa. Coffee. Tea. I don't care. Just get something and just relax. Okay, we are back and this is what it looks like straight out of the oven. Hot, sizzling, boiling. Lots and lots of juices. Amazing amount of juice. You actually have to be careful taking it out because that's how much juice it is. A really, really extensive amount. Uh, if I were you, I probably would use two pans instead of the one. Okay. Now I'm going to cut them up into, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. And then I'm going to take these six pieces uh, and put them on a tray and put them in the freezer. And after they're frozen, I'll be back. And here I am. I'm back. <laughs> okay, it's called editing, guys. All right. Uh, it's these little fingers in a computer. It's amazing what we can do. All right. So this is the tray. And I have the meat in the tray. And now it is frozen. I just slide this tray right in. So why don't I just cut it and put the big pan in the freezer? It just don't fit. <laughs> what can I tell you? It doesn't fit if I do that. So I cut it up. I put it on this tray, which I use for a lot of things like uh, freezing bananas and then vacuum packing them. And speaking of vacuum packing, this is what happens to each one of these squares. I've already vacuum packed one so you can see. So I take one or two of these blocks out and I put them in the fridge a couple of days before I need them. So I have a revolving system. So I can take this out and when it's thawed, I can slice it up and I'll get, let's see, one, two, three, four meals out of this. Now remember, Jingles is only eight pounds. So depending on the weight of your dog as to how much you're going to give them. But Jingles doesn't like mush all the time because this is, when you thaw it out, this is a meatloaf. So what I do is I take one more step and I will turn these slices into kibble. All right, so what I'll normally do is I'll cut it into four. I'll give him one, make a big production deal out of it on a day when I think he's going to be mm, super hungry. All right, and then I'll take it and take the slices. And this is what I do with the slices. I take them and I roll them out. Here, let me show you a little close. Uh, I got an LX100 right here. So let's do a little video. This is what, let me show you this part first, okay? And you'll be able to see me switch to it. And I'm gonna, now this is with uh, a frost, all right? Because I just took it out of the freezer, all right? So this is what it looks like. I'm shooting this on the LX100. And then I'm gonna come back. Come on, Peter, more to your right, more to your right. Come on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Come on, Slowpoke, let's get going. All right, all right. All right, so this is what it looks like when I roll them out nice and flat. And then I put them in the oven uh, on the parchment paper, probably on a cookie sheet. All right, let's go back to me. All right, here I am. Oh, okay, hi guys. <laughs> Let me turn off the LX100. All right, so uh, that's what it looks like. I make it really, really flat. Um, and then I put it in a cookie, not, not the plastic tray, but like a cookie sheet. And I put them in the oven for 200 degrees for three hours. 200 degrees for three hours. And then what I do is I take Tupperwares that I've already got prepared. And I take this. And I usually use a fork because sometimes it comes off easy and sometimes it's kind of stuck, 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 stuck. Okay. So I just will loosen up one and don't touch the other two so that this way I know I can get all of this uh, in and this is one meal okay so I will take this and I will put this in here I'll crumple it up a little bit can you hear it I'll put it near the mic 
it's it's hard now it's like almost like a kibble not super hard you can adjust the timing to what you think your dog would like if you want it extra crunchy go four hours if you want it less crunchy then just go uh, two hours but I seem to like three hours so now I would have fed him one slice because this is going to give me four slices okay and these are going in the refrigerator uh, unless I need a little bit more for the same day or the next day I give him half of one and then the other half and that's it that's the Jingle Bell Loaf the Jingle Bell time with the Jingle Bell Loaf the Jingle Bell Loaf and he's sitting there white he thinks he's gonna get more all right thanks for watching that's Jingle Bell Loaf and Peter in the kitchen catch you later bye bye Whoosh. You have just watched another Peter Gregg video. Something warm, human, and wonderful happens when you watch Peter Gregg. Thank you for watching. Description of all equipment used in this video plus any notes Peter took while filming are always placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on mobile apps. Duly noted. You gonna eat the plate? Good.